All right. Thank you, Jimena. Hello, everybody. Um, this is our pen pen ultimate uh, watercolor session, meaning the next to last. So um, today and tomorrow we have. Um, two sessions that'll be watercolor related, and they're actually going to kind of piggyback on each other pretty nicely. So um, if you're signed up for today and you like what's going on, uh, tomorrow will make a lot of sense in terms of, uh, you know, continuity from, from today and to, into tomorrow. So feel free to do that if you haven't done it already. Um, I'm going to go over what we're going to do in a moment, but the first thing I always want to get everybody squared away with is the supplies. So let's just take a quick look at that. Once again, if you've, if you've taken these classes from me, you, you know that I'm really flexible with these supplies. If you've got certain colors and you don't have others, um, and especially today where, where we're not actually making uh, an, an image, like we're not doing a, a master copy, we're not doing a still life or anything like that. It's going to be a little bit easier because there's not going to be anything where we got to match that blue to this, uh, to that tablecloth or whatever we're looking at. So there's a lot of flexibility with this, these supplies. So let's take a look at these here. Um, I've got uh, one thing that I didn't mention last time is I've got uh, a, what's called a China white, Chinese white. Um, it's the white that is used in watercolor a lot, and it's more of an opaque color. Um, that'll come in handy for certain things. Um, yellow ochre, raw umber, ultramarine blue, brilliant red, lemon yellow. Um, having the paper towels is uh, always crucial with watercolor. And then just tap water in a little salsa bowl or a yogurt cup or something like that. Um, that will get you through it. The other... Um, series of supplies that you'll want um, today because we're going to, I'm going to show you a bunch of different techniques um, and not really worry so much, of, like I said, about an image. So I've got a few things here um, that are going to come in handy. Exacto knife. If you've got an exacto knife, that is a great thing to have for today. Um, a, like a little straight razor too that you put on a mat cutter or um, you know, they sort of slide into our uh, uh, paint palette knife, things like that. But anything just sharp metallic blade like that um, will come in handy. Um, just a regular old eraser. And it's best if it's one of these sort of stiffer plastic erasers rather than those gummy erasers. The gummy erasers will work, um, but they're a little bit different um, in terms of what we're gonna do with them. Um, the other type of uh, eraser that I like to use is these, they're kind of like mechanical pencil. Let me see if I can get it focused a little bit better. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, where instead of lead, it's just a little piece of an eraser and it goes in there and you can kind of pop it out uh, like by pressing that. Mine, unfortunately, <laughs> they're both this size and I have not been able to find this size anywhere. So I'm still looking, but I will use uh, what I can from these, but these are wonderful for um, some of the things that we're going to use. Um, we're also going to talk about using salt and watercolor. So just like table salt or this rock salt, you know, those one of the little grinders, like a pepper grinder thing. Um, having some salt on hand is great to have. Um, I'm going to talk about masking fluid. Um, this is sort of old and, I, and you can see I've already put some down here so it's had a, had a chance to dry and it looks like it's pretty dry. Um, but if you've got masking fluid, it's also called frisket. Um, that's something that I, I'll, I'll talk about briefly, um, but it's kind of a specialty item. So I'm not expecting people to have that just laying around. Um, I'm also gonna try and play around with gum Arabic. Um, this is something I haven't done a lot with, but I wanna just sort of see how it goes and uh, mix it with some of our watercolors and uh, see how that works. Gum Arabic is, is basically just a, uh, it's kind of like a heavy water. It's kind of, it kind of looks like molasses if you look at it there. Um, and it's, it's used to kind of thicken up your watercolor and give it a little bit more um, what's called viscosity, like a body to it. Um, so we'll try that as well. And what else? Um, I think that's about, all in terms of materials. You'll of course need brushes. Um, oh, another thing, yes, I forgot about that one. So I've got a, a range here, uh, a couple sort of mid-size round brushes and then what's called a filbert. 
which is sort of a mix. It's not a completely flat brush, but it's got kind of a rounded edge there. You can see um, up top. Uh, filberts are kind of my favorite little brush because they do a lot of different things. Um, and then a piece of, uh, I'm going to use a piece of saran wrap, which is plastic wrap. Um, you can use just like a regular piece of plastic, but this is nice because it holds its shape when you wrinkle it up and we're going to build some textures with that. So, um, oh, another thing I forgot. Got lots more. I'm going to have lots to show you today. This is a wax candle. It's shaped like an egg, but it is a candle. Um, if you've got a white crayon, like a little Crayola crayon, um, or even a colored crayon, if uh, I'll explain uh, why you might want to use white instead of um, you know, blue or green or something like that. But anything that's waxy like this, um, I've got a couple of sort of cheap candles. I've got this one, and then I got one of these, which is sort of, you know, you put it in a uh, one of those floating, you know, you can put them in a little dish of water and float them around like that. This is, just, it's just a candle. And um, I'm going to be using the candle part. I don't actually need the, the metal case, but anything waxy um, like that is another thing that I'm going to show you as well. So that's, that's quite a, quite a list. Um, but I have this little handout here, which I have posted over here. So if you want to just look at that and maybe take a screenshot of it and print it out for your own notes, it sort of is going to go over everything that I have uh, discussed today. I'm going to show you most of these things um, and maybe a few extra things, actually. Um, so this is going to kind of be a, a potpourri of different watercolor techniques that you can use um, really any way that you, you want to. Um, my goal here is to generate some really cool textures, patterns, shapes, et cetera, and then try and make, um, try and make an image out of it um, by, with, coupled with what we're going to do tomorrow. So it's you know, the, kind of the two-day thing. Um, tomorrow's is going to be like using watercolor in conjunction with um, you know, charcoal and pen and colored pencil and things like that. So it's going to be um, a mix of different materials that you can use with watercolor. Today is the more technical thing. And so by tomorrow, we'll have a bunch of really kind of cool patterns. And, and maybe um, at the end, I'll try and uh, piece together uh, maybe an abstracted image or uh, a series of patterns that look good together. Okay. So if you've got any questions, of course, always just feel free to put them in the chat and uh, uh, Jimena can relay them on to me. So without so further, we, we, do have a have, we do have a couple, yes. Um, yeah. So would Himalayan salt work as well? Yep, Any, anything salt. I, I've had, I've taught, I've taught the salt thing. This is, this always cracks me up. And I had this woman um, who was very fastidious and she tried pepper, paprika, you know, all these herbs and spices. None of them will do anything for watercolor. Salt is the important thing. If it's pink salt, if it's big salt, if it's little salt, they'll all work. But don't try, you know, just because, oh, I put salt in my eggs and sometimes I put pepper on my eggs and pepper will not work and neither will anything else other than salt. But as long as it's salt, it's great. Perfect. <laughs> Could you repeat um, the type of eraser again as well? Yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've just got, um, this is a, I think this is a Pentel, but, you know, Strathmore, a Staedtler, uh, no, not Strathmore, but Staedtler, just these sort of hard plastic white erasers. The white ones are best because sometimes if it's like a pink eraser, the pink can kind of rub off onto your paper, which might not be what you want, but the hard erasers are best. The gummy erasers will work, but not as well as the, uh, as the stiffer ones. Perfect. And also um, those techniques, will you be posting them on your social media or maybe if you could send them to the Michaels team so that they send it out with the email tomorrow, that would be super helpful. Yeah, I've got this. Um, I've just got this little handout. I've been using it for years. Um, that would be, where would be the best way to put that? Should I just, I'll just, uh, I'll just give it to Michaels and they can post it wherever they think it will be best seen. Perfect. But if you want, like I said, if you want to go to this and just do a quick uh, screenshot, that's that's kind of what I had in mind there. So if you want to do that now, you can 
can do that. And I'll show that later, maybe at the end. If you if people remind me at the end, I'll I'll put this back up. Okay. Um, and and one last question. We've gotten yep. this question, um, a few times now. How would you replace cadmium red and cadmium yellow? Um, with any strong primary yellow. Um, so this one here, this is the little Michael's Artist Loft brand. Um, this is lemon yellow. This would work fine. Um, this is this is cadmium yellow. Is this cadmium yellow pale hue? There's there's a bunch of different types, but anything that's like a strong primary color to give you a contrast of what probably would not work. Like this is yellow ochre. Don't go by that. See, this is more of an earthy yellow. Um, you want something that's like you know like a like a really ripe banana yellow. Something that's got a a, a nice um, strong lemony uh, hue to it. And then red, same thing. Um, red, what do I have here? This is uh, called primary red, cadmium hue. So it's sort of a cadmium uh, variation. This one's called, oh, this is cadmium. There's one called Windsor. There's brilliant red. Um, there's even alizarin crimson, which is sort of a darker red, more of a maroon. Um, really anything that's a strong kind of in the stop sign uh, neighborhood of reds would work. Perfect. And blues, there's a ton of blues, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, uh, Prussian blue, cyan blue, there's, there's all kinds. So anything that sort of fits the, the bill of like a sky blue kind of uh, look to it. Awesome. All right. And I think we're ready to get started. Awesome. So I'm going to switch over here to our overhead scene. And um, I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of go, uh, all over the place here and try and do it in an order that makes some sense. And so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna talk about um, what I've put here. This is the masking fluid. So I'm gonna do this first because it's down and it's dry. Um, this is what's called colorless art masking fluid. It's also known as Frisket. Um, and you, you know, this is Windsor Newton, which is a very common brand. Um, this will cost you about 10 or 12 bucks, something like that, and it'll last you forever. I mean, you can see this has been through the ringer. It's had ink spilled on it. It's, I've spilled some on the floor. It's, it's really been, uh, been used and abused, sadly. Um, but it's still in good shape, and it's basically like liquid rubber cement. Um, so if you look at it, let's see if you can see it there. It's just kind of, it's kind of like a milky looking thing. Um, and I put some of this on, and I'm not going to put this on because I have a bunch of things that I want to show you, but I just put it on with a little stick. You can take a brush and, and put it on. And I've just sort of made a little, you know, sun type thing. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to dry and it's pretty much dry right now. And what it is, it is, a, it, it's a, a resist, meaning when I put water on it, um, and I'll just, uh, let's just go, let's go red. It's going to get a nice vivid red here. And I'm just going to go over what I've drawn or painted. And I'm going to be really, really saturate this color. Lots of pigment. And you can see that it's just kind of shedding where I've painted it. It's shedding the pigment. Let's just really get it red. I'm just gonna load it up some more. Okay. So this is how Frisket works. So if if you want, if you wanted, to, you could draw you know, anything you can draw with this stuff. And this stuff is, is, is pretty fluid. So if you had a nice proper brush, you could make really intricate little lines. You know, if you're drawing a horse and you wanted to make its mane stand out with little white highlights, you could, you know, kind of draw it like that. If you wanted wisps of grass or draw a fence through a field or something like that. This is where uh, frisket masking fluid comes in really handy. So it, it works as a resist. Um, on our little notes page here, this is on the very bottom. So I'm kind of working from bottom to top here. So the resist with wax or oil pastel, I'm not gonna do the oil pastel, 
um, because I don't have those handy at the moment, but anything that's that's uh, a wax based or an oil based will repel the water. So you can get a um, two different areas working simultaneously. And so that's the idea here. And I'm, while this is drying, I'm gonna actually do it uh, with our little egg um, uh, candle here. And this has been <laughs> sitting in my art supplies for years as well, luckily not in terribly warm conditions. Um, and I'm just gonna draw with it. I'm just gonna kind of use it. Um, I'll just do a little, little zigzag here. So I just made a kind of, you can kind of see it right through there. I'll let that sit aside. Let's do a different color just to mix it up. Um, let's go with another primary, a nice dark rich blue here. I'm just doing these. You don't have to make it as dark as I am, but I just want to do it so you can see it well. So this is, I think this is uh, ultramarine blue, I think, which is sort of a real common one. And this, because it's wax, there we go. It is a resist and we have our little drawn image. Now, obviously, um, if you had a crayon or something that's a little bit more uh, intricate and you maybe sharpened it or whatever, your, your lines could get a little bit more, um, uh, you know, sort of delicate and soft and, uh, you know, just fine detail kind of work. Now, the difference between these two is that's pretty much what I'm left with. Um, this, I can't change this. So if I did this, let's say I did this in yellow crayon, um, I would have sort of a yellow color under, underneath here with this blue around it. With this, the frisket, the frisket is like rubber cement. And I'm going to, as soon as this is dry, I'm just gonna start peeling this off. And that will um, allow the paper now to be sort of back in circulation. Because I've used wax and because it's a crayon and I can't really get that off, um, it just stays. So these marks are, are not quite as precise as what you'll get with the frisket, um, but you can sort of incorporate some, some base colors if you've got, you know, like I said, like colored, uh, colored crayons. So those are two um, kind of fun resist ways. And there's tons of applications for this. Um, you know, I could, I could have really, you know, just sort of done polka dots and, and, and done maybe sort of a light. Actually, I'm going to do a different one here. I'm going to do just a little, just a little sort of kind of all over. Just something like that. See how that looks. I have a feeling it's not going to be terribly exciting, but you never know. I'm going to go with orange on this one. Ooh, orange with some of my leftover blues. It's going to be kind of gross color. I want to load it up with more orange. It's sort of more of an earthy orange now. So let's see how that works. Yeah, I didn't press nearly as hard. And it's really not doing a whole lot. It's just kind of ran across the surface. So it's, uh, it's one of those situations where you kind of really need to, yeah, now it's starting to show up a little bit more. Yeah, you can see how it's a little bit lighter in spots, but I just kind of ru lightly rubbed over the surface. So it, it, it creates a little pebbly texture. Let me hold it up a little closer. You can see it a little bit better, kind of like this little mark here and through here. So if you really want it to stand out, um, you, you really have to push down on it. But if you want something that's a little bit more subtle to create that, you know, the hint of texture, just kind of a, a light application is, um, is, is probably all that I'll need. Um, so let's see how this is doing. That's still a little bit damp. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more because there's lots more to, to show you. Um, the next one I wanna show you is, is what's called the reductive technique. Reductive just means taking away, reducing. Um, so I'm gonna pull this aside. 
and I'm going to pop this one in here. This is the one that I did two, two demos ago. So it would have been, I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe. We did two this week earlier. I forget which one. But I really want to get in here really close. So right here, I've got this. This is where a little bit of, of this dark color leaked up into the waterfall. And I really want that waterfall to, to be bright and um, you know sharply white. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to get my glasses. But I can't see very well up close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the business end of this thing and try to get it as flat. I don't want to go in here like I'm gouging it out. I want this to be a, a, a pretty delicate application. So first thing I'm going to do is just try to clean that edge up. That's not doing a whole lot um, because it's there's not much color there, but it's just sort of cleaning things up. This is where I really want it to get. There we go. Let me get even closer. That's a little better. All right. I'm just going to try and bring this edge out. Now, the thing you have to remember here is you're 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 basically cutting in, um, cutting into this. Uh, paper you're you're braiding it and i'm just going to use a brush here to kind of get the the jibs off and let's do it a little bit more so you know you, you don't you don't want to go until you you know you, till you hit the till you hit the table underneath you want to you want to try and slowly but surely work its way back so it's a bit of a a bit of a waiting game. It will get you back to, to the pure white of the paper. Um, you just have to be a little bit patient with it. So that's that's probably about as, as much as I want to go. I'm actually going to maybe leave a little bit of some of this through to kind of maybe there's little little braids of the waterfall. So maybe I'll leave, leave a few hints of that darker color there. So Mike, is there a way to um, pick the color off with maybe like a small brush or, or water or how, how could you do it to not damage the paper? Yes, good, great question. And that's what I will do next. Um, this, uh, this is one that is, is very capable of wrecking your paper if you're a little bit too vigorous with this. Um, if you're doing it nice and slow and, you know, kind of at a, a more measured pace, it should be fine. Um, so don't shy away from this one because this is probably the best way to really get rid of, of, of the color. But you do have to keep in mind that it, it, is, it is metal on paper and metal's gonna win every time. Um, but if you're careful, you should be in good shape. That being said, um, I do wanna show you the removal with water. So I'll keep it like that. So that's pretty good. Let's get up there. So that's 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 a real nice crisp edge. The uh, the damage to the paper is not bad at all. There we go. So I mean you you're up pretty close on that. I mean there's my there's my finger. So that's that's pretty small. So if you can see, that's not really done too much too much damage to that area. So it's in pretty good shape, but if you're not terribly delicate with this and you worry about you know, your, your finesse and touch, that what you were talking about, uh, that last question, using the brush to kind of remove some uh, pigment 
get this one here. So this is the one we did last time. This is the pepper. And oh, by the way, I've been, uh, not finished it, but I've at least put everything in. So if you were here last time and, and saw that you know it was about this much done, I just added some more color in here and, and did a little bit more fine, you know, Wyeth type marks. If you wanna see how this was done, uh, just look at the archive on the Michael's, uh, Michael's Stores page on YouTube, and you'll see this one sort of built up from the ground floor. Um, so for this one, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and open it up. And this looks a little bit too hard edged. So I'm going to try and sort of soften the transition there. So what I'm doing here um, is I'm just taking my water and I'm dipping this finer round brush into the water, sort of letting it soak up a bit. No pigment, nothing, nothing else. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of reactivate the red kind of around the edge. So where it transitions from, from red to this white highlight. So let's see how this goes. So once again, the rubbing back and forth is abrasion, um, but these nice little synthetic hairs are not nearly as bad as an X-Acto knife. So you're able to get a much, uh, much smoother, uh, more relaxed, less potentially damaging um, transition. I'm just doing it on either side here. And this would actually be a good one to use the eraser on as well, but I've, I've wet it, so it's not quite ready for that yet. So you can see this, this little area up here has gotten, um, has gotten much lighter. So let's just dab that out. So this, this area right here has, has gotten a little bit lighter. Let me just get you in closer on that. Do the same thing. Now, a, a, a sort of a, uh, a thing to avoid here, if you're doing this, you're going, oh, that's not quite getting up as much red as I was hoping. Maybe I'll just start using my metal exacto knife. Well, so that, Mike, we have a question about that. When you use yeah. a knife, um, does it matter? if the um, paper is wet or would we have to wait for it to dry completely? That is exactly, I was, you were reading my mind, whoever asked that question. Um, you do not want to use this. You do not want to use this on this right now because this is wet. Do not use it on, on a wet piece of paper. It will, it will not end well for the paper. The X-Acto knife doesn't care, but your paper definitely will. Um, so you have to make sure this is completely dry. Like I would blot this dry and then I would let it sit and then, you know, for 10 minutes or so. And then I would, you know, come in here and use that um, because it will shred the paper um, and it will, it will be something that you won't be able to prepare. Now um, for here, if I wanted to bring out a few highlights in here, um, actually let's try that. Um, where should we, where would be another good spot? Let's just do it on, on this sort of secondary highlight here. I'm gonna get a smaller brush. So this is, this is kind of doing the same thing um, that I was talking about with the, uh, with the bigger brush, but I'm just gonna do it in a smaller area. So I'm just getting a little bit of water on this, this tiny little, uh, this is a Kalinsky Sable brush. Very nice brush, what size is it? doesn't say, it's probably about a one or two, it's pretty small. So I want this little secondary highlight here to get a little lighter. So I'm gonna, that's a little bit too much. Always have your paper towel ready. There we go. I'm just trying to pull this highlight out a little bit. It's, a, it's nice and rich and red, um, which I kind of like, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. So you notice I'm going back and forth, I'm going over it, getting more water on there, getting the pigment out of the, 
out of the brush and sort of re-saturating it with water and just kind of pulling that out. Is that, are you getting that? Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. So it's getting a little bit lighter. The more, the, what's, what's happened here is you, you see how red this is? This is really saturated color. And what that means is it, it more pigment has absorbed into the paper. So it's going to stain the paper. And to get below those levels of staining, you really have to kind of dig down um, and get rid of, you know, one, two, three little micron depths into the paper um, before it will really start to get white. So if you, if you need this to get white, um, you're probably going to need to use um, the razor blade. This is probably about as good as I'm going to get with that. So that's lightened it up, but it certainly hasn't um, gotten it back to white. So let's try getting rid of everything here. I'll just Mike, use what are yeah. your thoughts? on using a um, electric eraser to remove color? Um, I've never tried it. That's a good question. If you want to do an experiment, see how it works. I would think with an eraser is not as abrasive as this, um, but it's probably a little bit more abrasive than what I'm showing you with the application of the water with the brush. Um, so it's kind of in that middle ground. Um, I would say if it's not too vigorous, it should be totally fine. You know, if you don't have it on like, I don't know if they have different settings or how they work exactly. I've actually never used um, one of those. So you can see there that that's really picking up the white of the paper. It's very fine. Let me get in there. We do have another question about um, if you're, constantly going over um, the paper with a brush, with a wet brush um, to remove the paint or to lighten it, will yep. it make the area fuzzy? How could you avoid that? Um, it can. I mean, it, that's the thing about all of these reductive techniques is, is you're, you're essentially damaging the paper uh, to a degree. Um, and, you know, a really important factor of this is really to try and minimize that. So, you know, I'm starting to see like a, a change in depth in the paper with this little highlight that I've developed here. Let's see if I can get you in even closer. Um, and that's something when I start to see that, I'll go, all right, that's about as far as I can get with it. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna try and dig deeper into that. That's probably as light of a highlight as, as I can get. So, you know, if you compare that to that, this one is, is a little bit um, smoother. It's a little, still a little bit more darker and saturated, but you've gotten rid of more pigment here. It's just how much you're willing uh, to pay the price for, for doing um, that kind of work to the paper. So it's, it's really, if you're doing it in small, ink, in small areas like this little highlight here, that's not gonna be, unless somebody gets up there with a, like a, a hand lens or something and looks, they're not gonna really notice that that you used uh, a razor blade in there. But, you know, if I were to try and, you know, like get this all back to zero or, or back to white, that might be um, pushing my luck a little bit. So um, let's just get back to this one here. Let's see, well, 1236 already. Right. I'm just gonna just take this edge off a little bit. This is dried now. Yeah, so I'm just kind of transitioning the highlights to the body of the pepper color um, and just sort of creating a little bit more of a transition there. Um, and that's, that's kind of a nice combination too. The, the, uh, the other thing that you can use here, of course, is the erasers. Um, I'm gonna try this one. And these are good for precisely what I've done here where you've got pure white, and then you've got a next tone, but it's, it's kind of a, 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 you know, a rough transition. If you want to make that more gradated, um, these little mechanical 
plastic brush uh, erasers are great for that. They kind of create uh, an in-between level and, uh, and, and can blend, blend things together really well. And that paper actually is in really good shape. So I, I didn't go too much into things with the, uh, the metal, so I didn't overdo it there. And I'm being fairly delicate with this. It just requires a little bit of finesse, a little bit of patience. And it will, and it will give you that sort of lighter tone. So yeah, that's, um, that's some reductive techniques to take with you. Um, let's go back to our, go back out here now. Let's go back to this. Now this is dried. This is the, the frisket, the um, masking fluid. It's called a few other things here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to get rid of it. And you just get rid of it if you've ever played with, um, there it comes, rubber cement. That's basically what it is. I mean, it's, it's kind of in a different configuration here. When it comes off there. I'll just leave the goop over there so you can see what it looks like. It's coming off. Really nice, crisp, hard edges. So this, this is something that you, you know, don't use rubber cement. I mean, I said, it's kind of like rubber cement. Don't use rubber cement and expect these results. Um, you've, you've got to get it sort of in this uh, form. So it's, it's kind of designed specifically for watercolor and water media. So it's coming off and see all that's, and it's not, it's not sticky once I ball it up like that. So got a few in here. And I'm just kind of lightly going over things. So Mike, what paper is this you're using? This is just a regular kind of student grade uh, uh, watercolor paper. I think maybe Canson, I believe, but I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I've got so many piles of uh, art supplies lying around. And I sometimes I'll just, this is, this is one that I've, it was a bigger piece that I've cut down into a bunch of smaller pieces. So I don't actually know. Sometimes they have a watermark on them, like it'll say the brand kind of embedded in the paper. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's nothing special, just sort of your average watercolor paper, 140 pound, which is sort of a standard size. So that's all the frisket. Um, and now what I have here is I have a surface that um, I can now, let me just get this stuff off my working space. There we go. Um, so now I have this paper is like pristine watercolor paper. So if I want to come in here and just do another wash, let's just do a yellow wash. I don't even have some yellow, so let's put some yellow out over here. Um, let me get rid of this. There's some colors that I do not want in there. So I'm going to clean this tray. Or mostly clean it. And then this is the lemon yellow, which is the Artist Loft 24 set that I got and has been performing well. Put some of that down. And I'm just going to load it up. Not too thick, just a nice sort of medium saturation wash. I'm trying to make this whole thing. So what this will do is it'll kind of make the whole thing orange. And then those little tendrils that I've created will get colored in with yellow. So you can kind of, you know, you can kind of plan if you use some sort of masking fluid, um, you can kind of plan for like, okay, I want this to end up being orange. I want these to be yellow little rays. And you can kind of, you know, step one, do this, step two, do that. But you, have, you do have to think about it. Now, I'll do the same thing here and you'll see the difference. Um, I'll make a green. 
but this resist area here is not really going anywhere. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this yellow. I'll just do it on one area here. So you can kind of see the, the different effects. Get a nice little green swath here because I added a yellow glaze, but it, this still remains that color there that the, uh, the wax um, from the little candle had on it, sort of that sort of mild pinkish color. So wax is great, frisk it's great. They're very different in terms of the end result. Um, this being something that you can use the paper over again that you've covered up. This, it pretty much seals that, that uh, color as is, and you can't manipulate it any further once you've got that wax on there. Okay. All right. Any questions about any of that? And then this one is dry that you can sort of see that texture much more subtle, but it's still there. And it's um, and that, that would be good for like, you know, if you're doing a landscape and you wanted to sort of do a, you know, a beach or something like that and create a little bit of texture to it, um, that sort of light application would be a nice uh, way to see how that works. Okay. Um, Mike, yeah. um as Andrew is asking, if you applied masking fluid on dry paint, will it lift the paint after the fluid, fluid dries? Um, that's a good question, and it should not. Um, this this is designed to come off and leave, you know, make no damage to whatever it's put on top of. Having said that, um, this is kind of an old one; like it's been around for a few years. Um, as it gets older. And you'll find this with like paste and glue, it tends to get a little stickier. So sometimes it can damage the paper if you like leave it on for like uh, two days or three days. The longer you leave it on, um, the more likely when you start to rub it out, like I showed you earlier, um, it can damage what's underneath it if you're not careful. So if you get it new um, and you get it off, uh, you know, you do everything within a, an hour or two, you should be fine. The longer you leave it on, like if you forget it overnight, you know, just sort of, you know, make a little, make a little prayer to the art gods and hope that everything goes well. It should lift up fine, but there are instances where I've seen it do otherwise. It's, and it usually is, if it's old, like this stuff is old, like 10 years old or something like that. It's been sitting in this bottle and it changes kind of its structure. Um, and if, um, you leave it on for too long, those are instances where it might not go the way you hoped. So yeah, that's a great question because it does happen. Okay. So let's do, uh, let's do some other stuff. Let's do, let's do salt. That's always fun. People love that one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay in uh, a nice dark, uh, one again, maybe I'll do a purple. I'm doing a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. I'm gonna lay this down. And I'm I'm deliberately trying to control how much water is in here. So this is this is not a, a mud puddle. Um, this is kind of a nice, even, uh, really wet uh, wash that I'm applying here. But it's not, you know, I'm not like scooping water. It's not a bathtub full of. Uh, pigment here. So this is about good. If you um, do this, so now I'm going to do table salt. I'm actually just going to put a little bit in my right hand. That'll probably be better. So I'm putting a little bit of table salt right in there. Take some and just delicately sprinkle it around. There we go. And I'm just going to let that sit. So what's happening is um, the salt absorb, absorbs moisture and it sort of pulls things in. Um, and I'm going to do the rock salt on the other side. So this is going to be bigger, hopefully bigger. There we go. There's a couple big chunks that came out there. So let's do a couple of those. And so it's it's absorbing the water right now, and it and it kind of creates um, this uh, snowy, um, star-like uh, quality to the the wash that you put down. Um, this may not. What do we got? We got about 
12 minutes left. This may not dry in time. I've got another one that's already done. Um, and I'll show you that if this, if this doesn't come together. But there's another texture that I want to show you here. So I'm going to do another. Um, I'll just do the same color, kind of like that little purple. Maybe it'll be more reddish. Maybe like something like this. It's creating another, another little wash. Same basic consistency as I had in the salty one that I created there. Put a little bit more blue in there so you can see things better. And what I'm going to do now is let that sit, let the paper kind of soak it up a little bit. And I'm going to get my plastic wrap, cling wrap. Um, and if you if you you want to get really technical with this, you can kind of you know manipulate it into whatever shape you want. Um, the good thing about cling wrap is it tends to stay put, unlike you know like a regular plastic bag. This will work with really any plastic, but this tends to hold its shape really nicely. And then what you do is you just crinkle it up. It creates all these little um, ribs and striations in there, and then you're just going to put it on there in a little bit like a nice configuration. I'll just set it like that. And then you got to let that sit off to the side. Um, while we're waiting, I actually, I'm going to show you, I'm going to try one more thing. Um, this is the gum airbag. I'm really kind of curious to see how this works. So, oh, thirsty brush. That's another good one. I want to show you that uh, before we do that. So, thirsty brush is, let's just do another nice big red, nice big red wash. We're going to make a picture. We're going to make an image out of this, of this page by tomorrow. That's my goal. I'll sort of use some of this for tomorrow and see if we can't make a picture that's interesting. All right, so now thirsty brush. So I've got, I've, I've got a wash up here. Let me, let me focus out a little bit more. There we go. So I'm gonna just take my brush here, clean it off, get the pigment out of it and kind of really get as much water out as I can. And what I'm going to do here is as this is drying, because this is drying as we speak, I'm going to try and bring some, yeah, it's still a little wet. You see, I mean, you, you see how that white line is made and then it still soaks in there. It means it's probably a little bit still dry. So I'm just going to keep pulling that out. And then as I'm going, just cleaning it, getting rid of the water. And after a time, I may go to another one here. Actually, I'm going to go right over here. So you can see what's happening. This is getting lighter. Um, so you can kind of control, like if you want a little variation in here, if you even wanted to kind of make a little pattern and just kind of keep reiterating that. You know, as it dries, it won't fill in as much. A little bit more. Yeah, see now you notice I go back and forth, back and forth like that. All I'm doing is just pushing pigment after a while. You have to make sure that this brush is doesn't have any pigment on it. So that's why I go in here and doesn't have too much water on it. So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to suck up the water. Um, it, it, you want it to absorb. Um, you want it to absorb what's already there as it's going down. Now, the other way you can use this, um, this is still drying, uh, drying a little bit slower than I thought. So I'll just do it on an, another one that's dry and show you how else you can use this. So on that blue one right here, basically doing the same thing, but this is totally dry. What you can do is you just have the water on there and you reactivate the paint. And you can kind of pull, it's, it's like an eraser. Um, let me get you a little closer there so you can see that better. 
get over there. So you can see how that blue is slowly getting lifted up and getting lighter and lighter as I remove more and more. There we go. It's starting to look good. The salt is really starting to look good now too. Spoiler alert. All right, let's pull that up. And you can see how it kind of makes a, a little bit of a dark edge too. It's kind of like a snow plow. It's kind of pushing the pigment uh, off to one side. So I just keep getting rid of all the pigment that I've sucked up there and add a little bit more water. And after a while, you know, you kind of run into the situation where, you know, you might be damaging the paper. So there's a point of diminishing returns here uh, that you want to be pretty aware of. This is damp, but it's much drier now. So let's see how this is going to go. Yeah, that's much better. So that's, this is kind of the sweet spot right now is it's still damp. So it, it immediately, you can immediately pick it up. Um, Try a little bit. You can kind of just get rid of some paint as you're going through here. It's very subtle, but it's a great way to create texture. You just bring out, you know, like it's a little lighter through the middle here, and then it gets a little darker on the edge, just just for variety's sake. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So that's a nice way to create some texture as well. Um, let's see. Let's uh, pan over here to the um, to the salt. So you can kind of see how that it's really nice. Um, nice texture that's formed in there. Let's get a little everything that way. There we go. So yeah, that's really working well. And the timing on that is just about is just was just about right. Um, I, I wet it, but not over wet it. It was it was definitely glossy and you could tell that it was uh, that that it was damp. Um, and then I sprinkled the um, salt on there, smaller bits over here and bigger bits over here. And it's kind of created this really nice, subtle, um, kind of almost galactic uh, effect. You know, it's kind of like looking at the Milky Way at night. It's, it's not really bright, um, but you can see it's kind of lifted off um, and gotten rid of a lot of the water. And conversely, some of the pigment has been pulled out. So it's got that speckled uh, texture to it. Um, let's see if, if I got lucky here with the, uh, the other one. Let's try that, Let's see how that goes. Drum roll, please. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. So that's, that's what the plastic looks like. It's just been kind of blotted onto the, onto the plastic and it's, kind of concentrated it in certain areas. I really love what this does. You can also do this um, really with any, I mean, you could do it with paper towel, but the, the, the good thing about this is it doesn't absorb any of the water. So you get a really concentrated uh, amount of pigment because it's kind of con uh, condensing it in certain areas and kind of pushing it away from others. So you get this kind of light, medium, dark uh, tonality plus the pattern. Um, so those are two really nice uh, examples of, of how, to, how to create that, uh, that pattern. Um, incisions with alls and let's, let's do that one. We got time, 56. Well, you know what? Maybe I can save these uh, for tomorrow. The other, th these, are, these are the coolest ones, frankly. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep these here. Does anybody have any, um, any stuff that they want to show that they uh, tried as we're working along. Maybe we can do a, a few spotlights here. Yes, um, I just have well, someone has um, a few questions or just a question. Sorry about uh, tomorrow's class. Could you just 
mention a little like what what's going on tomorrow? Um, yeah, there's a little blurb of it on Michael's, um, which talks about combining watercolor with different materials. Um, I'm going to be concentrating on watercolor pencils and oil based pencils, um, maybe some charcoal, like charcoal pencils, um, also pen and ink, um, you know, sort of highlighting shapes and things with uh, micron pins, which I have right here. These are Stadler pens, so I'll be using these. Um, and really there's anything that you might have lying around that you want to bring and try, um, in combination with this, uh, watercolor is really known for its, its flexibility in terms of what it can be used with. Um, so we're really just going to kind of experiment with different combinations and I'm going to, uh, you know, show you what to look for, what to avoid, you know, certain things that don't really work well together. And what sequence do you want to do the watercolor first? Or do you want to do the pencils first? Um, so those kind of questions are going to be uh, gone over. And hopefully we'll, with our little um, impromptu demonstration here, maybe try and generate an image with all the stuff that we're working towards here. So that's, that's what we got in mind for tomorrow. That sounds perfect. So now we still cool. have a couple of minutes if anyone wants to show their. Um, yeah, you want to highlight your uh, your stuff, and see what you got. OK, so we have Sarah. Yeah. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, you're a regular. That looks awesome. Some awesome. looks like some wax resist. Very cool. Yeah, nice yeah. combination. A little salt on the edge there. Cool. So we have Laura. Yes, I mean, you do. Uh, there's somebody that just asked a question. Um, when everything is dry, yes, you want to brush off the salt. Unless you want deer coming to your house and licking your paintings. Uh, <laughs> Here's Carol. Carol. Oh, yeah. Carol, you got a, a whole bunch of stuff going on there. That oh, looks great. Yeah, there's lots more. There's lots more you can do with it. Some people put like rubbing alcohol in their water and that creates all these ribbony patterns. There's tons of stuff out there. Um, yeah, feel free to just uh, just experiment, see what different techniques do. Although pepper does not do anything or paprika okay. or ground. So basil. I think Laura wanted to, sorry, Laura. <laughs> oh, Laura, all right, yeah. Oh, cool. So did you have some frisket or do you have something with that little star up in the corner? Looks like it. Yep, that looks to be it. Great. That's Perfect. it. Yeah. Skit. Perfect. And Leslie, I think, wanted to show her work as well. All okay. right. Yeah. Is there a, it's all backlit. I can't see it too well there, Leslie. Is there a way to angle it so we can get a little more light on it? Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Yeah, cool. You got some little uh, little salt there on the bottom, right? It looks like. Very nice. Little resist going on. Excellent. So we have Sherry as well here. Oh yeah, lots of nice resist in there. What's that blue thing you're holding up? Is that like a marker or a watercolor? Oh, for the resist. Ah, gotcha. Very, oh, so it's like one of those resist pens. Yes, I've seen those. Great. Pretty cool. Excellent. But let you Mike again, because we're out of time, but remember, okay. uh, Guys, if you want to show us whoever wasn't able to um, be in the spotlight and show us um, your stuff, you can always post it on social media and hashtag make it with Michaels and Michaels classes and we'll get a chance to see them. Yeah, that was great. Thanks very much, folks. I had a great time. And tomorrow we'll be sort of moving ahead with different materials um, and really just trying to generate some new stuff um, based on what we've done today and what we'll do tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Perfect. folks. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.